Hello there. Welcome to Nerd World History. On this channel I discuss anything and everything historical that interests me. Today I'm looking at something of an obscure vehicle from history, which you may have noticed I like to touch on quite often. And I'll be honest, I only came across this vehicle when I was researching something else I did in a previous video, and it is the Russian Teletank. A very modern concept dreamt up in the interwar years between the First and Second World War, which the Russians put into practical use in 1939, and it's basically a remote-controlled tank designed to save lives on the front line, so it's a radio-controlled battle tank. Before we get started, if you like this video or anything else on this channel, please like, share, subscribe, and comment down below as it'll help the channel grow. And I have two other channels, Nerd World and Nerd World Films. Nothing like this channel, but the link in the description below if you want to check them out. They're more about pop culture and science fiction and those things. With that said, let's get start get into the Russian Teletank. The Teletank, as it was known, was obviously a modified existing type of Russian tank. Now they used a few different models, but predominantly the T-26 was the primary tank used. They came in a few variants with a few different types of armament, but they were mostly just machine guns and flame units. This was due to the inaccuracy of the vehicle, although some experiments were made with them using chemical weapons, but they were never to our knowledge deployed in anger, only ever in testing phases, but they were designed to carry them if needed. They were also noted for being able to carry sort of an armoured bomb, which the tank could drive up next to a bunk, right up to a bunker, drop, get out of there, and it would detonate blowing bunkers open. As the tank wasn't really used for main armament. One of the greatest weaknesses of the vehicle was its lack of audio receptors. Although obviously cameras were used to help navigate it remotely, it had no audio receptors, so it couldn't hear what was going on around it for the controllers back at its command tank. The vehicles were controlled, as I just said, by a command tank, which would stay as close to them as possible, but still staying far enough back to stay out of the action. But close enough that if the enemy were to capture the teletank, they could move in and destroy it with their main gun, as the command tank would have an actual gun. But it was there mainly to destroy their own vehicles, not the enemies. They were remote controlled, as I said, they used radio waves, but they were the transmitters only had two frequencies. This was in case one was jammed or compromised, or anyone was attempting to hijack it, they could switch to the alternative frequency. But it was still pretty limited, only having two frequencies to use to control the tank, this was still a great weakness and vulnerability. Surprisingly, these were used in combat, but records are rather scarce. They were used between 1939 and 1940, predominantly again in the T-26 chassis. They were used in the winter war between Russia, the USSR and Finland, not against the Germans in the upcoming Second World War for the, for the Russians. Against the Finns, the tank performed relatively well. The Finnish army, though, was far more experienced and dug in and was not as easy a target for the Russians as they believed, but the tank was used during this conflict under certain cer select circumstances. The tank will be driven to battle as normal, as it still had all the internal controls for a manual control. So when not in battle, you would drive it manually, you'd put a commander and a driver in and that was pretty much it, and send it to the battlefield. They'd then hop out and the remote systems would be switched on and it would drive into battle remotely. This was the idea behind this was obviously to save lives, but also to engage without fear of losing your life. The Russians felt that if soldiers would fight more aggressively, this tank was would be used more assertively by their forces. If the troops felt that, I'm not going to die, it doesn't matter if I ram it into the enemy armor tank. There's an enemy weapons cache there, I have no weapons to shoot it down, I'm just going to ram it. And you just drive the tank straight into it, didn't really matter. You weren't going to die. You could go on a suicide mission, but you wouldn't be committing suicide. That was the basic idea. It would allow the troops to fight in a more aggressive stance than they would normally. And by all accounts, it worked. They did fight more aggressively, they did use them quite brutally, but the death nail for this tank actually came in 1940. At the end of the Winter War, the T-26 was, was already becoming long in the tooth during that war. Now against the more modern and aggressive German battle tanks, the T-26 was an outdated design, and as it began to be phased out, so too went the remote tank. So for this brief time period, the USSR, Russia, led the world in remote vehicles. There were a few other remote vehicles during the war, including a few other 
uh, for the Red Air Force, for example, they had a remote control plane, which I'll do a video on at some point in the future. But they led the world in this remote technology. No one else had a remote controlled battle tank. No one. Experimental, maybe, but this was actually used. And ironically, Russia as a country has not really repeated this technology heavily in the decades since the Second World War. But as I said, this tank became quickly obsolete because of the sheer ferocity and power of the German Panzer Corps and German army broadly. Their, their tanks and their dreaded 88s would take out the T-26 easily. It wouldn't, it wouldn't even be able to stand up to them, to the Panzer II, Panzer III, it would have been taken out. And it was, inevitably the Germans would have probably figured out how to hijack the controls and turn it around and fire it back at you. So the tank was phased out and the, tech, the program kind of ended. And that's the Russian teletank. It's brief history, but surprisingly was actually used in combat. Let me know in the comments below, did you hear, have you heard about this vehicle before? I'm sure some people have heard about vehicles like Goliath and just things that are remote controlled vehicles used during the war, but the teletank was something relatively new to me. I didn't know anyone had gone to the extreme of actually putting completely automated systems into an actual battle tank. But they did, because of course the Russians did. Well done. A very impressive idea. As I said, let me know in the comments below what you think of it. Did you know about it? And other than that, please like, share, subscribe, and bye-bye.